Hey everybody, Stu Smith here with another Tactical Fitness Report, and I have my good friend Pat Bonus here from Connecticut. Uh, he's also part of the Heroes of Tomorrow plan. If you're not familiar with that, you need to go check out stusmith.com and click free workouts. That's right, free workouts. Both uh, Pat and myself offer people who uh, want to serve in military, law enforcement, firefighter professions, people that have served as well, as well as people that are active duty uh, in those professions wanting to do something, you know, to move along their career in, in the form of free workouts. So we help them prepare for whatever that goal is. I, I just wanted to say that's who we train because it's not for somebody who, hey, you guys offer boot camp training? I'd love to try that, you know, for people who are not wanting to serve, right? So this is for people who want to serve. It's it's a great group, and uh, I'm very grateful that Patrick trains people up there in Connecticut. He's got a great program, and like I said, it doesn't compete with anybody. It's just a his workouts and my workouts that we invite people to join us. Simple as that. If you don't show up, we're still working out. Very true. Yeah. Yes. So thank you for that. Uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit today about the word failure and how, you know, we think it's, it's overused, it's um, maybe not best defined, right? And people, I think people get too caught up in it. And, uh, but anyway, this was Pat's idea to discuss it. So Pat, let's open it up. You, you you start this journey off in failure. How, how are we going to succeed with this podcast? Well, yeah, I I my hope is is that we don't we don't continually use the word failure because I think that um, in my opinion failure is a complete you know lack of success in in definable terms. Where and I don't think that you know in my philosophical mind that each day is allowing us to be unsuccessful. It's quite the opposite. It's allowing us to have successes. It's allowing us to grow. And I've been, just heard the term failure. Kids need to fail. Well, do kids need to fail? Do kids not need to see that um, falling short or not meeting the standard is actually um, a barometer on how to improve, um, on how to grow? And how can we, we've talked, you know, and again, we can touch on other things that we've talked about in podcasts, but how can we actually grow and reframe it rather so we're, we're trying to redefine failure 100 percent. and right? instead of using that term I, you know you, you mentioned earlier that uh I, I had read something on a post maybe and it wasn't uh I, I just read this guy's post and he had failed several times along his journey but he never used the word failure he used the word grow, uh, learning experience right every time Right. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Thought that was a great way to reframe it. As a yeah. Way. You know, and I think that that if if kids need to fail, I think that we're looking at it in the wrong. I mean, are, are we setting up things that are, uh, you know, a, a, a too steep of a climb for them to to get to intentionally? I think it's the it's the wrong idea and it's a misuse on what kids need to look at, but we've also seen overuses of words we, that they become almost trendy in a way to use. I saw the word excellence become very overused. Oh you know? yeah. Overused word. hundred percent. You know, what does that mean? And, and it's not, you know, and so for failure, I think that we're not looking at what failure really is. And it, you know, and, and what I spoke to you as well is that when I see a, you know, a kid taking the PST who technically fails his PST, Right. Well, do, does he or she fail their PST? I mean, how many opportunities do they get to take that PST? Well, it depends. Right? <laughs> it so, depends on what program you're on. Sometimes you just get one, and eventually you will have just one. You right. know, so there is a there is a journey, yes, and you, you should be taking these things and not meeting the standard many times. You know, you're going to probably start off and take your first PST and not meet the competitive standards. Well, what's that tell you? You have to work harder in order to meet those standards. And right, it, so I see where you're going with it. And I was just wanted to say that that's, that's, you know, you're exactly right. You know, it's, you don't really fail it just because you take it for the first time and you don't do well on it. You know, that yeah. is, 
Yeah. That's very common, right? But what do you do about it? That's and, the next question. The, the, and that's just, that's exactly the, the direction in which you have to go. What are you then doing? Are you being self-reflective, critical? Are you looking at, wow, I did not, you know, you know, and we've talked about this before. Are you failing or are you failing to prepare? That's mm -hmm. a big thing. Have, you might have failed to prepare. It doesn't necessarily mean that you failed, but you now have the opportunity to fix your preparation. So the next time that you get it, that you have, you know, and, and we can go back and forth. I, you know, as a teacher, I have, I give kids tests and quizzes all the time and there's real ebb and flow of, of, you know, I, I don't think I have a kid who does well on every single test. And sometimes when the quote unquote failure comes in is the, the other reason why I never send parents the end grade. There was this thing called end grade and I never sent them end grade. Because what that does is, and I like to look at it as a circle, if you, had a, if you had a chart, it would measure you in your immediacy. We Oftentimes we don't want to be measured in our immediacy because there are things that come into play that if you don't do well on a test, well, um, did you get bad news from home, right? Um, had you been out with the stomach bug for two days? Did you just come in and did you just own the test, do what you can do? right? And understand that there were real reasons that were causing that lack of success in the immediacy, right? And that's where I think that we have to understand is, is that, again, some of us may want to be measured in the immediacy and we need to be. But over the course of time, if you measured my, I don't know, two-year-old son um, in that immediacy where he didn't have a lot of speech, you know, he could have been deemed in the eyes of the state back 20 years ago, something that he's not, you know, oh, sure. right. And so we can't, and that's, that's a, that's a different example, but measuring in the immediacy is where we're looking at the misuse of failure, right? So they're not, they're not really failing. They're having a, a bad test. They're having a, a, a bad level of preparation. Um, they might have a, a bad approach, approach for a, a number of reasons. And I think that when, you know, life rears up in any situation, um, we also have to understand that it's, it's not a failure as much as it is that we're trying to establish the skills and the toolkit for us to have a growth mindset. Because the, the growth mindset, if we want to put it to training, um, you know, you start off a new program um, and let's say you're starting off uh, on a hypertrophy program where you're, you know, adding weight, you're increasing weight, you're lowering the reps uh, and you look at the first week compared to the, the sixth week. Well, if you measured yourself in the first week in the immediacy, you would be failing. You would not be utilizing the weights you would be not pushing the weights at the desired goal sure and you're not making that parallel to well where are you at in a psd where are you at in an asfab what what are you what are you doing to understand that it is a much slower process with hiccups in the immediacy all along the way yeah so if you're on day one you would probably fail if you're on day 50 you probably succeed and meet the standard. Right. Right. So, um, well, t tell me this, I I'm going to throw a little curveball at you on this one because, you know, a lot of times, yes, do we need our kids to fail? Do we want them to, you know, hit a bump in the road and then not give up, you know, dust, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, get, get started again. You know, that old classic, um, you know, but how about this one? How about, you know, everybody succeeding, right? Everybody gets a trophy. One, right. I, I, you know, I, <laughs> I could, I could not agree with you more in the sense that I know where you're going with that. Yeah. That it's not that um, everyone needs to get a retake on a test. It's not that everyone needs to get a, uh, a blue ribbon. And I, I have seen that in swim as well. 
that everyone needs to get a trophy. Everyone needs to get rewarded. They, you know, need to be, it needs to be inclusive and all that sort of stuff. Right. There's another, there's another level in that when you, when you fail, you're not really failing. You're moving in the direction you really were intended to move. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we all have different strengths. And so there's an example of a kid um, who I saw, he came and introduced uh, himself at the pool and he was the boat team leader um, for this group. You know, he was like this really smart, you know, individual and really physically fit and all that. Um, The other kid in his group uh, who I sent you a picture, who's a 20 year old seal right now. um, The other gentleman who was, I guess on paper looked a lot better than the younger guy who was not swimming very well, who, you know, was only a junior in high school, all that sort of stuff and was failing regularly, right? S- swimming a 1030, you know, 500, you know, really not meeting standards all the way around that really smart athletic on paper. Awesome guy. I think in like the second week out at buds rang the bell and left and walked away. And he didn't really fail. He realized that his fiance and the life with his fiance is where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm fully confident that that young man is in a great relationship, is still in the Navy in some capacity. Could succeed in other capacities. 100%. I don't think he failed. I think he got to a point where he had succeeded and succeeded and succeeded. And the kids that are constantly getting the trophy or constantly getting the ribbon or constantly getting supported are running the risk of getting to a point where they realize that this is not for them. And that's not so much a failure as much as a reawakening as to what they really want to do. And I think that, again, maybe that's reframing, but we, we can't always look at things as failures as much as like a real eye opener as walking away from something because you were influenced or there was some false expectation of what you thought you needed to do. And if we have this expectation that we need to get straight A's across the board in classes or in college, well, that's not exactly what it is. A solid B can be a great grade, especially in a class that is not something or a course is not something that you are very well versed in. And you worked your butt off for that B. 100%. And I think that it's not to instill mediocrity, right? But going to everyone gets a trophy. We have to allow kids to understand that, that a B or a C plus is not a failure. You know, as, and, and as we're learning that, you know, as, as we're looking at education, what are the, what are really the valuable things? I asked my physiology class, today, what are the three things you need to do in this course to succeed? First one is strong notes. Cause I've been giving some open notes. Okay. The second thing is you need to be here because mm-hmm. you got to You got to be here to take notes. And the third one is your attitude. Your attitude is everything. How do you approach this? Are you positive, interested, staying alert and engaged in class? And what are the underlying things that you need to succeed? And you know, that goes back to what is your why? You want to join the special operations or you want to join uh, you know, any tactical career. You have to understand too that whether you succeed or fail is based on why you're doing it in the first place. What is your enduring purpose? That's a very good point. And so, you know, I I mean, if you looked at a lot of things I've done in the past, I've failed a lot, so I should be in pretty good shape. You know, people are saying, oh, you you know, we're human. We are experts at failing, you know, and depending on where, where you call your failure, you know, a lot of people will do this, you know, they will fail that first time and never strive to get better because they've stopped. They've stopped working. Now, I've seen guys, we have a guy here working out with us right now that um, started with us last April. So do the math, a little over a year. And he was 350 pounds. And he is now about the same weight as I am. We're, wow. we're both hitting 200, about the same. So he's dropped 150 pounds in just a little over a year and has completely changed his his life right and he's going to serve Good so I, I, you know i talk a lot about you know helping guys prepare for spec ops but l- let me tell you something i get a lot of reward of helping someone do that 
you know, go from 350 to 200 pounds and able to serve now, you know, in, in the army, he's, he's going to go be a combat medic. He's already an EMT. He wants to be a combat medic and, um, you know, versus taking somebody who can do 10 pull-ups and getting them up to 20 pull-ups, you know, that's a fun challenge too, but there, there's, there's not a huge reward in that. That's that meaningful, you know, 10 to 20 is like, Hey, yeah, sure. You know, here's how you do it. You know, <laughs> you know, it's not, yeah. like, doesn't require a whole bunch of emotion, you know, cause that's a life changing, uh, you know, just a life changing thing that he has accomplished. Yeah. You know, to change him for the rest of his life, not only health wise, the knees to thank him and everything like that. But, you know, it, I mean, that is, that brings me reward. Right. Well, and, and, and even if he doesn't make it into the army for say some medical reason or whatever, right. You know, that is not a failure. Well, <laughs> yeah. And you, know know, I mean? if, you know, if he came to you, you know, what would you say a year, year and a half ago, yep. he was 350 pounds and he thought, I want to become an army medic tomorrow. Right. He would have failed. Sure. A pro, in all probability would have failed. I mean, to pull, to do, to do a PST at that weight, I mean, unless you're. You or know. how about this? Walked into a recruiter's office. What would the right. recruiter have told him? Yeah, you, you can't join. You got to lose 150 pounds. Right. You know, and so his, yeah. his success that he is having is that, I mean, he probably had a couple weeks, few weeks, month, two, where, you know, he was hands on his knees on the side of the rail trail, you know, you know a mile in. You know, oh, yeah. really struggling, heart rate up, you know, really feeling like, you know, this isn't for me, you know, going back at it and having failure all the way through. Yep. And dieting. Uh, yeah, right. You know, you know it, there's, there's a lot more to it than just an hour workout. Uh, yeah. And, and, and the other 23 hours of the day where you're controlling your, you know, discipline of eating. Yeah. And, and did he, uh, did he, uh, some weekends, you know, I, I, did he have pizza wings and Oreo cookies for dessert? You know, but did he have some failures in terms of where he was like, wow, I really, I got to change that. Uh, again, those are all questions that he would have to answer. Sure. They're, they're just things that I've seen with individuals and that if, if you measured him at any point or he measured himself at that time where he's on the side of the rail trail with his hands on his knees, where he's questioning what he's doing, can he do this? Um, you know, there's two things about immediacy there. Is he measuring himself in that moment where he's going to just walk away, just turn back and go back to the community center? It's not for him. Um, or is he expecting an outcome too quickly? Sure. Is he expecting to become an army medic in a month, in two months? And the people that, that I've seen that, that tend to succeed over time, especially uh, in the, uh, in the training programs. And, you know, like you said too, um, the only reason why, and I always try to qualify that when I say that I train people that go for special operations, it's because they have a swim qual. So the, the, you know, the swim qualification is really why most of these individuals seek me out. Um, yeah, you're a great swimmer. Well, I, I yeah. don't know about that, but, um, you know, I can stand over you and tell you what you're doing wrong. Sure. Um, <laughs> I think that's, you know, and, uh, so I just, I just trained an individual for, um, SWAT team. He was a narcotics officer and he was nervous. He was like, my swim is, is my big thing. We got to swim with BTUs. I mean, and for you, the swim would be, uh, it would be a joke, um, you know, and then the treading water, but it was something that he realized was his nervousness, you know, was his nervous point. Well, it's um, good to have that self-assessment too and realize that you have a weakness because a lot of people go into those things and they're like, yeah, I can do that. Or you know, they're either overconfident or they're just like, yeah, you know, what's the big deal? It's like a three minute tread, you know? Well, and, and I think it, that's getting back to your point of the, the, everybody gets a trophy. They've been told too long. Like they have an overconfidence going in because they've always, you know, or in, in no offense, they've, they've had an over encouraging mom and dad are like, you're great. You're amazing, which is true, yeah. but it, that doesn't, that's not going to carry you through the PSD. Um, you know, there is a bit of a gut check there. And so for him, you know, he, he didn't have just an easy flow of, you know, getting where he got and it established this, 
I need to seek out other people to help me. I need to have, you know, just like we talked about, you had a good swim buddy, a good workout buddy, um, you know, good running buddy. Um, you have to find the experts and, you know, and I've said that I, I am working very hard to establish a good life team that will tell me, no, you, you can do this. Um, well, you may need to work on this. Um, this may not be for you where we can balance that. And so you know, when he go, when he goes for his PST, he, he prepared, he met me early morning, um, worked, was on the phone with me, was working through some of his nerves. And he also, you know, going back to when you're saying like, you have to have some of that nervousness, some of that anxiety. I, I agree with that. You know, he did not sleep well the night before. Many of us yeah. don't. That's, that's important. That means in a way we want this. We want to make sure it goes right. We want to work hard. And I think that we have to just like, you know, everyone getting a trophy and trying to, uh, to quell test anxiety. And, and I'm, not, I'm not at all trying to undermine um, or be insensitive to test anxiety. What I'm saying is that a little bit of nervousness and anxiety is what can help us succeed. Oh, sure. I mean, it's a, it, hormonally speaking, it, it's your fight or flight response. And, yep. and you are getting ready. Yeah, you know, your absolutely. your mind and body and physiology is getting ready for that moment, and you're right. It, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, it, it shows you you want it. So if you can frame that in your head, and you're trying to get to sleep, sometimes that's a really comforting thought. Just to say, and give it a name. You know, I, I give it a name. I call it pregame jitters. Yep. Right, it's just it's just pregame yep. jitters. And sometimes there's you know that little name it and tame it thing we talked about in a, one of the last shows that we did um that's a good way to just let your brain understand and file that away and it kind of helps you relax and and you know, just give it a name name it and tame it yeah exa- yeah we talked about that in the past and i think that is some of the people that i've seen speak you know guest speakers or anyone like they don't have that nervousness they don't have that anxiousness and i think that they've failed in the way that they have spoke. They've kind of just like, you know, by minute 30, they're just fumbling through stuff. And I'm like, Oh, you know, this person had a really great opportunity to talk about this and that. And even before this, this conversation that we had is that how, how am I going to get what I'm seeing in my head about failure out to other people that you're not failing. It's not so much that you're failing. You're establishing this barometer of what you need to improve on, where you need to stay humble when you're doing well, when do you need to change it up when you're plateauing, yep. all these different things. Where do you need to realize that in this world of immediacy where you can Google anything, you can prime anything, where are you going to realize that making something that has a big commitment and enduring underlying principles, when are you going to realize that you have to be that individual who's 350 pounds and look at the horizon that is a year and a half out. Oh yeah. You have to be persistent and patient. Exactly. In other words, in other words, it's, you know, you, you can't look at your, can't look at your current situation and call yourself a failure. Right. 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 Well, right. You know, and, and and also where could, uh, you know, in terms of that and that really positive aspect of allowing yourself to not measure yourself in the moment, know that there are going to be, you know, pitfalls, there are going to be, and there's going to be some real successes along the way. Where are you also going to be the individual who is actually setting themselves up for another type of failure where just like that, everyone gets a trophy, the division one athlete who breezes through the PST is a very good student, has very good GPA, does well academically, can take all that, has very good but they get into a point where they run up against an instructor who is going to pick and pick and pick and knock down any detection of an ego. Oh, sure. That and some negative feedback. Maybe you're not used to handling negative feedback. You've never failed in your life. Right. (laughs) And and, and where, where are you, where, how are you going to take that? And that's that, you know, we talked about, you know, what I believe in, you know, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, but overall a truthful reinforcement. Sure. I think, you know, you do it very well and you have a very good way. I, I hear it in your videos. I see it in your videos because you'll quite honestly say like this, this person is an awful swimmer. 
Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, <laughs> and and everyone always, everyone always posts too. I can't wait to see him in two weeks or yeah. in three yeah. days. That's about my new my new challenge. I love finding a guy who can't swim across the pool because yeah. it's my my new challenge. I take that as a personal coaching challenge, and it's fun. Oh, it's 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 it. great. It's great. It's and it, it, it was it, in last night, you know, I had the kids that were, you know, did not look little kids because I was covering another person's uh, team and they were little, you know, one little girl, seven years old, and they did not look like breaststrokers at all, at all. And so there's this trick with your hands to make it scoop ice cream and go like that. <laughs> right. And so it's it, everyone's used it. And by the end of practice, these little kids looked more like breaststrokers. Were they breaststrokers? Would they probably get disqualified in their first race? Sure. Did they look more like breaststrokers? Yes. And was I happy for the improvement? There you go. Yeah. Improving is winning. Improving is winning. And so, you know, when, when you look at that, you know, from week one to week two, if you're improving, you're winning, you're going along the lines, um, you're improving from day to day. You're looking at that opportunity that every day is an opportunity. It's really how yes. you choose to, to optimize it. And, you know, I think that when we're looking at, you know, at failure, positive, negative reinforcement, we have to look at truthful reinforcement. And we have to, you know, and we've spoke about this, we have to teach individuals that when I tell you you're doing great, you have to actually temper yourself. You have to not, not get too high and mighty. When you're not doing the right thing, you have to take it, you have to fix the situations. And when I, you know, also when I, you know, when I say to myself, or to others, there has to be that truthful reflection of why did I fall short? Why did I succeed? What were the components that came into it? And when oftentimes I feel that when we fail, quote unquote, fail in that moment, it's because we did not answer that question originally, what we're doing this for? What, why are we really doing this? And so, you know, I think that, uh, with people that are training and individuals that are training, um, the biggest question you can ask yourself is what tools can you give yourself to prevent a failure? I think that, uh, again, you know, I, I don't want to uh, circle talk around this, but what are the steps that you can take to not fail? And I think, to be quite honest, um, I had a guy come to me and I think he was like thinking he was ready for a PST. Uh, he was hanging on to the lane line after like lap two. Mm, I, yeah, and not right. I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm just, that's not, that's not going to get you through. That's so again, uh, that reassessment of where he realized he needed to improve, I think is the, is the greatest way that you can also set up success is that, you know, if, if you're going for a, a, a test in the financial world, they give you practice tests. It would be dumb to go into your test arrogantly oh. without taking any practice tests. Absolutely. And so yeah. if you, you know. You, you got to know what, the way the test reads. You got to know how it works. You got to build a strategy for it. That's why I take the PST so much. In fact, we took the PST this week as our final um, kind of cardio high rep endurance phase, you know, that we go through during the summer. So this is our fall testing zone. And we tested and I could tell a lot of the people were writing down their scores to see where they matched up. You know, did they qualify? Did they auto qual? Did they, you know, did they meet the standard to, you know, get a, you know, get into the draft or whatever? And these guys aren't in the delayed entry program yet. They're just, you know, preparing. And, you know, I didn't use it as that. You know, I, I don't care where you are on this test as far as the standards i use it for this reason right how does that affect our next phase of training right so i didn't care if you auto qualified the run and the swim and you failed the the push-ups that wasn't what i was looking for i was looking at how many people can actually move into the next phase of training where we focus on maintaining cardiovascular endurance that they built up and their muscle stamina maintain that but now we focus on adding strength mm -hmm. how many people really probably need to still take a few more weeks and and work on some cardiovascular endurance before we go into this phase so i i have a group now that 
you know, depending on a lot of it depends on their size, their athletic history. And there's a lot of what ifs that, you know, you know, require, you know, what you do in the next transition to the next phase. Do you actually go into a strength phase or do you stay into a high rep calisthenic phase or do we drop the mileage and go more non-impact because you're, you're pretty beat up right now? You know, so there's a lot of, a lot of variables that, that occur. And I use that test for that reason. But I could tell there were many people feeling kind of down that they didn't get their auto qual scores like they've been shooting for, right? Whereas in a few weeks, you know, their strength numbers are going to be up, you know, just from doing a different cycle. You, well, you, know. you bring up a lot of good points. And, and one of them is that too. Well, they're a little disappointed and it might be because um, they want to impress you or, you know, they're looking, but how great is it that in a non-judgmental, non-official way, they're getting assessment. Yeah, that's all it is. A, a very honest assessment. And the other thing in a training program is, um, you know, I deadlift and, um, you know, I'm try, I don't know, I'm getting in a stupid phase where I'm trying to push back up to numbers that I was doing when I was in my young thirties, maybe, you know? Yeah. And so how, how do you still swim, you know, a sub seven, 500, and push your deadlift up to 500, you know, how do you, you know, and that's a, how do you maintain your strengths in the important aspects all the while working on your weaknesses? Because I see that there's an over-focus on weaknesses. So if you have, if you fail your push-ups, guys are going to hammer or, you know, just, well, push-ups, 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 push -up, push -ups, they're going to, sure. you know, train on that. And all the while they're not going to be running as much. They're not going to be swimming as, as much. Um, or they they'll hear something that, you know, right now there's a lot of sand rucking going on. So they'll start, Oh, I got to find a beach and I got to get a ruck and I got a ruck and a ruck and ruck. And then they're not swimming. And it may be because they don't like swimming. Well, you're still going to have to swim. You're still going to have to do that. And how are you going to prevent the, the failures to really look at where you're falling short, you know, address those. And just like you said in a program that you're assessing them. Uh, all the while not focusing too heavily on that to make sure they can still maintain their auto qual and their swim and their run. And, you know, and that's, that's a, that's a tough situation. And, you know, what I've found as well is that um, with all the information that's, that's coming to them, uh, you know, it, it's also a tough thing for them to filter everything out, you know, to have that good BS detector. I heard a, you know, I think I said before, I heard a good commencement speech, the only good commencement speech I've really ever heard. It's where the guy said that you have to have a good BS detector and you're getting all this information on what you need to do. Well, if, you know, and another quote is, is that, you know, if you are, if you are looking intently at the horizon and you're too fixed on the horizon, you're going to bump into every tree, every hole, every river, every stream along the way, potentially keeping you from getting to the horizon. So you have to be able to look at the steps that you're doing to get to that goal. And the metaphor is, is that if the horizon is the goal, how do you keep yourself fixed on the goal all the while seeing every situation as it pops up for what it is? And, you know, I, I think that um, if those individuals that, that failed to push up or, you know, failed to pull up but did well on the swim and the run, I hope that... Um, they look at that, you know, that disappointment and that uh, reasonable immediacy of failure as a motivator. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, that, that, that's how I framed it as such. I said, look, this is what we need to work on. You know, and, and there's no gray area. You know, I'm not saying you suck. You need to work on this. I said, these scores are good. These scores we need to work on. Let's focus on this, you know, instead of making it a maintenance plan for this right now. Let's go another month, you know, before we get into a pure strength program and we'll focus more on your, you know, some cardiovascular endurance. You know, and it also depends on their timeline. If they have a year before they are even joining the Navy, I'll say, let's just move right on into the strength phase. You know, we've done enough running yeah. and swimming and high rep calisthenics. Let's give your body a break. Let's go into a strength phase and a non-impact cardio phase, maybe throw in some rucking in there while we're at the strength phase. and you know, just move into the next transition. But, you know, there's a lot of it depends yeah. you know, that go into program management. Yeah. And I, I think, uh, you know, for anyone, again, you can look on 
on your pay on Stu's page and, and call me and ask me and maybe I can draw a better mental picture of really what are three underlying principles that are going to keep you uh, in that growth mindset that are going to keep you understanding that um, you're you're going to uh, you know have some slip ups you're going to have these but that you have you know a really good timeline. And what are those underlying lying principles of what you need to do? And, you know, again, going back to that, that term that I talked about, about being polished gray, you know, and those underlying principles can allow you to uh, adjust to any program that you have to be in to any time period, you know, and it, those underlying principles are also going to help you sit down for however long it takes you to take a written test uh, or to listen to a lecture uh, and take uh, strong notes, um, listen to an instructor you know, out at Bud's lecture about, you know, skills and things you need to do. Pay close attention when you're tired, uh, when, you, when you've, you know, when there's real critical instruction on dive equipment and yeah, things like that. Because it's a steep learning curve out there. Yeah, exactly. And so you those, pick things up quick. And, you know, being a fast learner and, and those underlying principles that are going to keep you away, uh, you know, from failure are those, those understandings that, you know, you don't have to always be you know, your best, you just have to be willing to be self-critical of learning where you fell short. And so, you know, not to belager the topic anymore, but I think that the overuse of failure comes from this whole adversity quotient that people are looking at, that people think that, you know, and I'm really glad you brought up the point of what, what happens when everyone gets a, gets a trophy. That's 100%. That's adversity too. Yeah. So that's, that's not looking at the entire picture, not looking at the depth and the breadth of the situation that you run the risk of failing. If you are overconfident, you've been told you're the best thing since sliced bread all your life. And you, you may have a more stick to it attitude if you've come through the mire a little bit. Um, but I, you know, as you've said, and you've quoted, and it's a lot deeper in wisdom than people would give it credit, but Kung Fu Panda. There is no recipe. <laughs> there is no answer. There is no, no secret right. sauce. No, there's no it's, secret sauce. You no, know, there's many variables, as you said, many layers to the quotient, and you have to be willing to understand. Um, I think the most important thing is that for anyone out there, um, don't measure yourself in the immediacy, but do measure yourself in the immediacy. Yeah, you you should measure yourself and just to assess and see where your weaknesses are. But then take those weaknesses and work on them and make them a strength. But you got to maintain what you're good at. Because where, where we go wrong is we just keep getting better and better and better what we love to do. But then our weaknesses never get to a level where you're competent in, yeah. in those activities, whatever that is. Could be strength, could be running, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah. You have to assess yourself. Don't look at it as failure. You have to look at it as an assessment tool, a learning experience, and then you move on. Right. But now you have a date where your your performance is going to matter one day, yeah. right? And even then, you know, we can discuss the term failure, you know, uh, even on, the, on, the, on those most important dates, you know, whether right. you win or lose. Did you really, you know, do you really lose when you, when you lose, right? Right, right. So and there, there, there's some things that you learn when you lose. But that's the thing. It's like win or lose, success or failure, you know, all of them are learning experiences. I saw a great quote the other day. It said, I'd rather, what was it? I'd rather fail and learn from it than to succeed and you know, be arrogant or, or, or something, right. you know, succeed and have arrogance about it, you, you know, so it was, it was something along those terms, but I saw something else today that I really liked and I'll, and we can apply this to the, the, the same theme that we're talking about. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal, a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan, a plan backed by action becomes reality. Yep. So I like that one. And then I, I like to add in the one, um, a dream without a plan is just a wish. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you know, and we, you know, not to get into, you know, many of the quotes that we discuss in my philosophy class, 
you know, in terms of the stoicism and things like that is you can wish all you want, but yeah. you cannot wish things to be, you have to put those things into action. You have to put those wishes and those dreams into action and have some real kind of, you know, attainable things. But, um, you know, to the point as well is that when we look at anything in terms of success or failure, we have to understand that neither one of them is clearly definable that, you know, if you, if, you know, like you said, if, we are to look back on our successes and failures. Well, are they really successful and are they really failures? And are are they actually building the ability for us to move forward in a positive direction? So, you know, you talked about your friend who's a rear admiral. Well, he failed at buds, right? Yeah. He's, he's a, has a different job in the Navy because he didn't become a seal, but he's a freaking admiral. Did he, but did he fail or did he figure out where he was really intended to be? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I can't answer that question. That's what I mean. Is that I wouldn't say he failed. He's got a beautiful family. You know, served in the military for almost thirty years now. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, and so uh, I think uh, you know when you're training, uh, you have an opportunity. Um, you know, like virtues can you know they can be the way to guide a tranquil tranquil life. But virtues can also be blinding. And I think that's a good point. With all the information that is out there, you can be confused by it, but you also have a great opportunity. I mean, this day and age, back in the 90s, when I was even bandying the idea about going to, into the military before my father sat me down at the table, which I'll never forget, um, I didn't have the information kids have today. I mean, I, I would have literally had to go and look on like microfiche. People don't even know what microfiche is anymore, right? <laughs> to find out anything about JFK and, the, and the, the, the naked warrior and all. But now I can just Google naked warrior and I can find anything yes. I want. Yeah. I can find. Uh, and so that can be daunting too. Um, I like your Q and A's. I like the stupid questions, meaning that there are stupid questions because you can find all this stuff out here. You can go on to the Google machine and you can find everything you want. Filtering through what's going to be important for you is what I think, you know, some people are struggling to find with me. I think the priority is get through your PST. Once you've secured that, then start deadlifting and bench pressing and yeah. you know, doing yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, you got, you got to get to and through the training. Yep. Right? You know, your, your PST is your two. You know, one thing I do with the stupid questions, and to be honest with you, I, I tell people this all the time. I'm not pissed off that people ask me stupid questions. I want to teach people that there is something called initiative that you need to have, especially if you're going into the tactical professions. And a lot of that means you're going to be assigned a task to do something, and you're not going to have any direction whatsoever on how to do it and you have to figure that out right and that that's really what initiative is and you know when it's such a common question especially a reference type question of like hey what's my body weight supposed to be you know i'm you know i mean that, that changes for every inch of height you are you know how is a human going to remember that Right. You, you know what I mean? So that is reference material that I will never know. You know, now I know to go look online and say, you know, height, weight standards, military, and you know, you can find it. But yeah. you know, a lot of people don't even realize that. So when I say that's a stupid question, I'm not trying to say you're stupid. I'm saying that that is a reference type question that is easily found on the Google machine that yeah. most humans do not even put into their head as part of their, you know, recall ability. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I under, I understand exactly that. And I, and I, you know, I, I see the, the calmness in which you approach it. I think that, you know, for the individuals that are, I think that, you know, they're not able to understand what the important questions are. You know, so there's the yeah. reference questions and what are the, what are the most crucial questions they need to be asking in the moment? I think that's a big, that's a big deal. We get too far, you know, against the, uh, the horizon quote, we get too far yeah. ahead. You yeah, that's know? a really good point because, you know, my answer, does that really mean anything? Right. When you ask me a question, you know, and 
how does my answer affect you? Right? Is it really one of those questions that my answer even matters? Right? right. For instance, like, hey, whenever we run the PST, do we use a treadmill or do we use a track or do we use um, a trail, a dirt road? You know, <laughs> and my yeah. answer is, yeah, you may use either one of those. Yeah. So well, why does it really matter? My, my answer is this. You still have to run a mile and a half fast and you should be practicing it no matter what. And no matter what type of surface you're going to be running on, you should be passing it. So it yeah. doesn't really matter what my answer is. On no, that. well, all the quotes that we've discussed don't matter. The, the yeah. quote, the quote, they're just words. They're, yeah. They don't, they don't matter unless you can embody them and live, live that way and, and address it and such and put it to practice in your own life. And just when someone asked me, well, how do I lower my, my time? Well, I had a kid who lowered his time. I taught him box breathing before the event to quell his anxiety. Did that have anything to do with it? I don't know. I have no idea, but more than anything, you got to put time in the pool. You got to put time on the track. Yes. You got to, you know, got to put time in the sand. You got, you have to, you, you can get any answer you want. You got to put it to practice. You, you know, you got to go in, you know, and I tell my kids, how many practices to you know, my hockey players, how many practices do you guys have a week? You know, you, you have five, six practices before your game on the weekends. You have a lot of time to figure out, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses and, and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, you don't miss practice all week uh, and show up on Saturday ready to play. You yeah. don't. Yeah. Uh, and every day, every day is an assessment. And every yeah. day yeah. is your ability to, you know, reach towards success. And you know what? Along that success journey, you're going to fail multiple times whether you call it fail or whatever, I don't call it a learning experience, whatever. I remember, you know, when I graduated buds, that was one of those things where I look back and I was like, okay, I succeeded, but did I really succeed? <laughs> you know, I could think of a dozen things that I failed along the way that I didn't get the first time. Right. That I didn't do very well on that. I could have done better on, you know, so, you know, and even if you look at it along the two years prior to that, preparing you know hundreds of times not meeting a standard that i've tried to reach you know but i guess at the, in the end it really comes down to just you never stop moving and you never quit mm -hmm. that's the key to reframing failure otherwise right. you know you're just going to stop it's kind of like you ever see that picture of a guy mining and he keeps mining, he keeps mining, and he just gives up. And like the next pickaxe would have been like where all the gold was, right? right. He just gave up right there, right? right. So it's just, just got to keep moving. Well, and you know, and not to, um, the, not to, to go too far off, but the uh, never quit on the back of the shirt. You know, I, you know, I had some shirts made and I loved it. Um, I don't look at never quit in like just quitting on push ups. I look at it as a lifetime thing, right? Oh, sure. That overall, I'm, I have a, a lifetime overall never quit mentality. Not maybe, again, going back, I'm not trying to hammer the immediacy thing. It's not that like, if I went for a run and I cramped, that I would be like, well, I quit. You know, I yeah. have to hobble through the injury. Overall, in life, you know, sure. I'm, you know, I'm still around. I'm 42, um, you know, and I'm not you know, looking at my life as something that I'm giving up on. And I look at the never quit as a much deeper thing. Never quit, you know, is not so simple. It's not so just like, you know, let go of the chin up bar, you know, no, it's, um, you know, the chin up bar of life, you know, hold on, hmm. keep going, get yeah. back, hit it again. Yeah. You uh, get sick, you get injured, yeah. you just heal up and never quit and keep moving and fight it and, yeah, you know, one thing I, I like having my guys wear my shirts because nine times out of 10, they're always in front of me, especially when we're running because I'm just, you know, my legs are 50 years old now. <laughs> it, is fun. it is fun whenever I beat people, though. When people are behind me, I'm like, okay, I'm not the last guy. <laughs> <Right? laughs> then I yell at them for being behind the 50 year old. So, <laughs> yeah. Always... But seeing that sometimes, I'm like, all right, got to keep going. You know, it, it, it's one of those things that, that it's very helpful. It's a very good mantra, I would yeah. say.
Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I've appreciated, you know, the five, six years or whatever it is that we've got to know each other, but that, that phrase is a very important one, um, you know, to have. And, and also for, you know, if, you know, I've said too, if this 42 year old guy's beating you, well, you should check yourself a little bit because <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm going for nothing. So, yeah. you know, I mean, when, when you're beating someone, you got 30 years on them, they should, uh, that's, that's a good, that's, that's a little bit of failure. I would yeah. say, you know, yeah. I mean, granted you're, you're, you got, you're, uh, a sound 50 but you know uh it, that is a level of you know when you get beaten by someone that's oh, yeah. a failure and that can be a great motivator so oh, absolutely yeah. you know and then you know when you know whenever we do the uh the test is is when i really try to put out you know right. i try to beat yeah. people you know that's just a competitive nature you yep. know, in me and uh i enjoy you know in the pool i can get most of them Right. But in yeah. the, uh, on running, I can get a few, I can't get everybody, but I, I can still get a few. So, yeah, but they're beginners, you know, and, and in a couple of months, they're going to be beating me, which is, that's my goal as a coach is to make sure they're well past me. So, 100%. Yeah. So, all right. So there you go. That's how we reframe failure, call it a, uh, learning experience, move on, keep moving, never quit. And, um, you know, we're human. We're going to fail, right? It's just how you internalize that is, I think, the the biggest marker of, of you reaching your goal and, you know, being successful is how you, what you call that individual failure of the day. Because we're going to do it every day. I mean, we are going to fail now. Just got to keep moving. So that was a good one. I appreciate your uh, insight on that. Well, thanks for taking the time. You know, do you I, have any? I know you're into the Stoics right now in your philosophy class. Do you have any uh, unique? And I'm putting you on the spot. I know um, Stoic saying, whether it's yours or someone else oh. from the BC world that uh, has along this topic of failure. Well, let me see. Uh, not, I, not not succeeding. Well, my my uh, favorite one that really um, got me into Epictetus uh is you know it's right here this book if you can find it it's a great one um it says disease is an impediment to the body but not to the will unless unless the will itself chooses lameness is an impediment to the leg but not to the will and add this reflection on the occasion of everything that happens for you will find it an impediment to something else but not to yourself Meaning that our will can override a lot of these impediments, mental, Absolutely. Physical, and we can will ourselves through some trying situations. Now, um, that's from Epictetus. He was a slave. Uh, nice. He was hobbled by his slave, by his slave owner, uh, by his master, and then he became one of the most prolific Stoic philosophers. And so, if a if a person who can come out of slavery, um, who can have true lameness, had to walk with a cane, can move on and move forward in a positive way and share positive things with the world and, and has endured many, many years. I think that that's what I like to see. I like people who live their speak. Nice. So that's a good way to, to end it. So do yourself a favor, folks. Listen to some of the Stoics. I guess you can't listen to them. You got to read them. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're listening to Pat, uh, you know, Pat, read it for you. So <laughs> there you go. All right. Hey, thanks again, Patrick. Thank you. And remember, if you're looking for a Heroes of Tomorrow program, go to stewsmith.com, click the free workouts link at the top, and you'll see a list. I'm here in Maryland. Patrick's there in Connecticut. And we have other cities that are available too that uh, people are volunteering their time to help people prepare for free. So there you go. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Stu. We'll see you.